Hey everyone, it's Steve. Welcome back to the channel. So recently I spoke about Mellosaur, a library that I've created. Today I wanted to show you the demo track that I created for it and how I use Mellosaur throughout this track. It's in a number of places in a number of ways that you might not expect. Um, so I'm going to walk through each one now and, and get you familiar with Mellosaur and, the, and what it's capable of. All right, so my track uh, entitled Enigmatic Waves was basically designed to uh, provide a bit of a context of how I would use it within one of my own productions. The funny thing is it sort of took a bit of a different path this track than I originally intended it for. I wanted to do a sort of like 80s retro feel, a kind of in vibe of the original idea uh, behind Mellosaur, but it turned into my own thing and I'm, I'm not disappointed. All right, so at the end of the video, I will play the track in entirety. It's about two minutes long. For now though, I'm going to dive straight in and show you a couple of different patches. All right, so the first one uh, that's ticking along throughout the entire track, uh, it's, it's constantly going through the whole track, is this sort of ARP feel. It's not an arpeggiator, it's more of a sequence that I've manually put in, but what I've done is with the Mellosaur interface, I've adjusted the ADSR filter, so it's a very fast attack but no sustain, no release, with just a little bit of a decay. What this results in is the note doesn't hold, it just creates a sort of pluck-like texture. It's a nice little texture and you can hear that I've got some delay in there, a little bit of reverb and that sort of stuff, um, but if we solo that up and have a listen, this is what it's doing. So it does that for a while and that's just ticking along nicely underneath there. What this is essentially doing is it's creating a, a kind of bedrock to the track, um, a harmonic structure to the track, and it's sort of the familiarity throughout the, the track between part A and part B, which are, which are quite different. One of the great things that I love about this library is the, the effects section. So in here I've got some, some saturation to push it and that's creating some thickness to the note, so it's a little bit more oomphy. Um, we've also got uh, some chorus mixed in, some of the delays mixed in as well, as well as the reverb. The delay is a tape delay, which is really awesome, and I'm going to show you why that's awesome in a little bit. The reverb is actually a impulse response, a convolution reverb, uh, and I created it using Native Instruments Rawm. If you're familiar with that reverb, and if that's how you pronounce it, I think, that is a fantastic, complex and long reverb that is uh, very beautiful, um, very airy, very light, doesn't get in the way too much, but it can really thicken up and be really atmospheric as well. So it's, it's wonderful to capture that and put it into this library. By the way, impulse responses are something that you can create out of anything. If you've got any old reverb plugin, any old guitar pedal, reverb hardware unit, reverb anything, even a room, you can create an impulse response and put that into your own convolution reverb. It may have originated in some other unit and some other reverb, but it's now your own and you can tweak it how you like it. It's really creative and really something I encourage you doing. And because there's a convolution plugin built into contact, it's something that's really great to add into your library. And I will show you how I did that in an upcoming video. So make sure you subscribe for that. All right, so what else have I used? I've used some classic kind of like pad textures that I created obviously, something nice and simple. This one is more of a uh, more of a string type sound. I have two textures that I recorded from the Atura behind me, the Polybrute uh, at the bottom here. One was sort of a string inspired sound, one was more of a brass inspired sound. They both ended up quite brassy, so one's more like brassy strings and full brass type synth. But I've got the blend all the way to the left and the tape all the way to the right, which means we're hearing the tape affected sound. And I'm just volume swelling that up and down using the MIDI control. You can hear that reverb and delay dying away as well because I baked some of that into it as well. It's really nice. A second type of patch is going to be this more brassy type patch and this is something that comes in a little bit later in the track. So let's have a listen to that. It's basically the same sort of thing um, but I've got it all the way to the right now on the blend knob so this is the brassier type tones. No tape texture this time, just the analog synth with some effects added in for, for that as well. A bit of drive on the, on the saturation.
when you load up the mellow saw for the first time, you're going to get the sort of brassy strings texture and you start to build from there. Those two sounds are beautiful and that was the idea behind Mellow Saw to begin with, but then you can really, really mack it up. And I want to show you now some examples where you can really push the library to do something very unique. When I wrote this piece, I think I was mostly influenced by Pink Floyd. I was just like channeling a uh, Rick Wright kind of vibe to the keys. This lead synth reminds me very much of, of his sort of style of playing and I've really just created it by just cranking the drive. If we take a look here, drive is cranked to the max um, and we've got a nice healthy amount of delay and reverb in there, a lot of reverb, uh, and it's creating this huge sort of sound that bites through the mix. Really piercing, but very beautiful, very reverberated, so it sounds like it's sort of in the distance a little bit. But there's these pitch swells and pitch bends that I've done as well, because built into the library is a seven semitone pitch bend up and down. It's basically a fifth. So let's have a listen to that now, if I just play it until it gets to that pitch bending area. I hit stop and that reverb just goes on forever. Mm, I love it. And also that pitch bend and then the little kind of whoop up at the end, uh, just because there's this like, as I release the pitch control, the, the note uh, bends back up and before I hit the next note. Oh, just a, a happy little accident, I suppose. Can I say that? That sounds probably weird. What's that guy, that painter? I don't know, someone remind me of it. Anyway, so that is a beautiful sort of lead line. I love it, very kind of the vibe of the track that I was going for, but that's not all that you can do with this library. That's quite still mellow in, in many respects. Let's have a listen to some of the textures that I built into the drops. I say drops are sort of rises, hits, rise and hits, those sorts of things. So this drop is creating, created using the mellow saw to start with. Uh, and I'm using the pitch bending effect and really kind of leaning into that texture. A lot of drive, low down on the keyboard, it's really gnarly a lot of delay, a bit of reverb in there just to thicken out that tone and stretch it out. So let's have a listen. That one's nice and soft and that leans in well because basically it's the pitch that goes into this first hit. But the second drop, you can hear a little bit more of that sort of texture. Again, you can hear it just sort of going on forever in that reverb, wonderful. So it's still quite atmospheric because I've added in a lot of reverb and I love that sort of texture. Um, but you can hear how this can kind of be a drone library and a really aggressive library if you want it to. It doesn't have to be mellow, it can be punchy. Um, particularly if you sculpt the ADSR as well, you can really kind of get some punchiness to it. All right, this is a but wait, there's more situation because there's one final thing I wanna show you that I created using Mellosaur, this sort of whistle texture. I'm just gonna play it and then tell you how I made it. All right, so how did I make that? So. The idea behind this is that I'm really playing around with some performance control. On any of these controls, you can just right click and learn a MIDI CC automation, which means that anything that you see here can become a performance control very quickly. I would just right click, for example, on this delay time, which I did, and then I just twizzled a knob on my keyboard that was mapped to any old CC group that I just wasn't using, and boom, there we go. I now have a performance control. I've done the same two repeats and I'm basically just moving those two. What I'm doing is I'm adjusting time and because it's a tape delay, you're getting these pitch bends and pitch sweeps as you adjust the time because every sample that's grabbed by the delay and played back is being stretched or compressed. So you get that wonderful tape analog delay sound. And then the repeats is, is the feedback or the repeats that you're doing, uh, how, how many repeats. And eventually you can get it to self oscillate, which is where I was sort of going a little bit. So just by, Doing that on the keyboard, just 
twizzling knobs on the keyboard I eventually got that sort of texture that I wanted I just hit record created that sort of texture so that was something really unique and interesting that I wanted to just throw in and have in the background because it sounded really cool um, to that particularly to that very spacey part a of the track all right there we have it so that is the library in action in this demo track enigmatic waves it's available on soundcloud if you want to hear it uh, and i'm now going to play it for you as well and um, so thank you so much for sticking to the end i'll catch you next time